whatever that is. So the eagle-eyed among you would have noticed that your mug has a picture of the... Some people call him the original Ronaldo as a Man United fan. <laughs> no, he's the original Ronaldo. Yeah, all right, fine, fine. All right, fine, fine. Okay, okay, all right. So who's your favourite player? Is it Ronaldo? Uh, to be honest with you, someone who I used to try to model my game on over here, Alan Shearer. Okay. Bear in, mind, bear in mind that I'm a Newcastle supporter as well. Newcastle United supporter. So I, I would say Alan Shearer is my favourite player. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> we are good. I'm, I'm really going to enjoy the final question. Okay. Um, uh, Joshua Wu had a similar question to us. Who's the most underrated player you have seen or played with in Malaysia? I, he probably wasn't underrated here, but he'd be underrated on the world stage. The hardest, one of the hardest players for me to play against was Mehmet Djurakovic. Ah, okay. 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 He very was an unbelievable centre-back and a very difficult opponent for me and someone who was very challenging for me to play against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You still keep so, in touch with Coach Mehmet? Yes, yeah, he's a good friend of mine. Good friend of mine. Fantastic guy. Really nice guy. <laughs> Right. So you had a lot of fantastic achievements in your career. Which one is number one? Is it the league? Is it the FA Cup win with Sabah? Is it the Golden Boot twice? Or is it the Aussie Caps? I think to play for your country is the is the pinnacle for um, any footballer, any sportsman to play for your country. Um, individually, probably in 1996 when I won the Golden Boot, I didn't score for the first 10 games. <laughs> um, somehow, and you won the golden <laughs> and, <laughs> blowing. Yeah, I, I'd scored in 94, 95. All those goals didn't score the first 10 games, scored against Pahang ahead of, and then went on a roll after that and won the golden boot. So I think that was a good achievement. Um, to win the FA Cup with Sabah, Sabah's first trophy after all those years was fantastic. Mm. Um, yeah, but I think to play for your to play for your country has to be the pinnacle. All right, all right. So I promise this is the last Sabah related question because I'm very <laughs> sure all our viewers are tired of this. Have you ever been to Sipitang, my hometown? <laughs> yes, I have. I've been all around Sabah. <laughs> ah, I've been all around, all around Sabah and I love Sabah. So I've been yeah. to the mountain, I've been to Sipitang, I've been, been everywhere. So um, Sabah's got many beautiful places and the people are fantastic. So uh, but I think the West Malaysians are going to get sick of you and me, both, you know, basically waxing lyrical about Sabah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know what? I, I don't care because it's about time. Someone has to talk about this. <laughs> yeah, true. Right. Uh, true. Yeah, yeah. The striker today who is most like you? In Malaysia, I'd probably say Locking, Darren Locke. Yeah. He, he maybe, doesn't score, maybe doesn't score as many goals as what I did, but hopefully he will soon. Um, but it's good to see him becoming goal hungry and uh, making making those runs into the box. And you know, so but the way he the way he plays is quite similar to the way I play. All right. So you've brought up potential answers to this. I'm not sure you've mentioned Junior. You've mentioned Corbin Ong. Mm. Who's a player today that you would really hate to play against? Yeah, I'd say Rizal Ghazali, our right back, and probably Corbin Ong. Those two. Rizal Ghazali is one of the best defenders I've ever seen. Wow. Okay, he's that's a pretty big compliment. Man, high fantastic, <laughs> yeah. fantastic defender and he's just, he's um, he's unbelievable defender. I, I was really surprised when he joined us from Keda and I didn't think he was as good a player as what he is and especially as good a defender as what he is. Mm -hmm. um, so Rizal Ghazali and Corbin Ong. Corbin Ong's recovery when he gets beaten <laughs> for t that that ten meter sprint that he makes when he get when on the rare occasions that he does get beaten, the speed of his recovery is world world class, world class. Yeah. So I'd say Corbin Ong would be frustrating because you beat him and then five five yards later you have to beat him again. <laughs> He's that quick. So, yeah, I'd say those two players. All right. So, we are going to have another one from our viewers. What is your reaction to El Haji coming to Sabah in 2014? El Haji became a friend of mine, but what a, what a character. 
What a exactly character. Yeah, what a character. Uh, I mean, where do I start describing El Haji? He's a very unique man. Um, obviously, a wonderful football player, but um, he joined, he came to Sabah in the twilight of his career. Um, he used to enjoy three or four glasses of red wine the night before games. And I said to him, I said to him, El Haji, you know, how do you, how do you justify this? And he said, he said, even when he was at Liverpool, he'd have three to four glasses of wine the night before a game. So not much you can argue with, is there? If that's what he did, that's that's what he did. But he yep. was, uh, I, I, I didn't have a problem with him, but I could see that he was a unique character, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. So mm. now we're going to move the questions a bit uh, global. Uh, who do you cheer for? Who do you support in the following derbies? Uh, first mm. one, Inter and AC Milan. Inter. Oh, right. It, why? I don't know. I just I just feel more of an affinity to that side of the, of Milan, you know? Yeah. All uh, right. Yeah. All right. Uh, Real versus Barcelona. Barca, of course. All right. Okay. Uh, mm. Rangers, Celtic. <laughs> of, co of course. Of course, Celtic. Especially now. Especially, especially now. Yeah. Especially now. <laughs> <laughs> we, when we have one of the greatest managers in world football coaching Celtic. That, that's a good shout. I think so as well. You're right. Yes. Mm, yes. Um, Arsenal Spurs. Spurs. <laughs> and, and that's why Kim Sui's not happy with that. He's an Arsenal supporter as well. I'm right? not happy with that as well. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm brother. about to be not happy. Yeah. So. <laughs> Sorry, brother. Man United, Liverpool. Draw. I don't like ah. either of them. Oh, you don't like either of them? No, that's that's a better answer. Newcastle. Oh, that's what I want to hear. Newcastle. Uh, Don's got the most biggest softball question. Newcastle or Sunderland? Come on. Newcastle, of course. Newcastle. Huh? Newcastle. All right. Yeah. Okay, so the World Cup is a matter of months away. Who's yeah. going to win the World Cup and who's going to be the standout player? Yeah, I, I, I try not to be to go with the general con, consensus, but I just think Brazil and I think Neymar, I think every great player in the world has to shine in the World Cup at some stage of their career. So I just think he's had a bit of a rocky um, period in his in his career. But I think that if Neymar can show up in this World Cup and be involved in Brazil winning the World Cup, it will go a long way to him being one of the greatest players of, of all time, I guess, you know. So, but he needs a good World Cup. He needs to be dominant in the World Cup and help his country win the World Cup. All right. What so, about Australia? Yeah, good point. Yeah. Uh, I think Australia are drawn with Denmark, France, and Tunisia. Um, obviously, a very, very tough, tough group. Um, so, you know, I. I could uh, I could lie to you and say that we're going to do great, but the reality is we probably won't we probably won't get out of the group. But you never know; you've got to be in it to win it. So so we'll see what happens. All right. So um, you you brought up Neymar and his position in history, right? Now this is something that we didn't talk to you about, but uh, I have my standing that you are on the Mount Rushmore of Malaysian foreign players. Means that you know you are among the top. Two, three. Are you are you the best foreign import that Malaysian football has ever had? I would never say that. I'm I'm Aussie. Oh, come so we on. Don't, we, don't, we don't talk big about ourselves. I'm very proud of my record in Malaysia. Um, you know, but there's a lot of other good players that played. For me, it's not for me to say whether I was good or not. It's up to other people. So, but I'm very proud of my of my record in Sabah. Not so much when I went to Negeri Sembilan. Um, but my my record in Sabah, I'm very proud. I'm also proud of what I've done since then in Malaysian football. Um, I consider, you know, apart from Australia, I've always wanted the best for Malaysian football and to be involved with some of the mixed heritage players who have gone on to help Malaysian football with JDT as well, um, to be involved with some of these mixed heritage players that have helped um, them. Um, but like I said earlier, now I'm at Sabah FC and everybody knows that Sabah FC is dear to my heart and um, I'm loving this job and this challenge and, you know, hopefully um, the um, club as a whole can keep getting stronger. Um, so this is the, you know, this is the next challenge for me. 
the mixed heritage players now is a thing of the past and my my uh, job and my loyalty has to be to Suburb of Sina. All right. All I have right. a naughty question to ask right now. Will we mm. see any new mixed heritage players coming to Sabha? <laughs> knowing that you scout them and you know you want it in place and so on. What's that thing when they take the Fifth Amendment? Can I take <laughs> the Fifth Amendment? <laughs> that only works in America. That's that only works in America. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the Fifth. Taking the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> Okay, all right. Well, okay. we we, ex- we kind of expected that answer. Mm. Okay, so you know you brought up something very interesting, right? Um, mm. Just now you mentioned that your, I mean, you always model yourself after Alan Shearer. Mm. So my question is, did you mean that like literally or what? Because when I was young, I could barely. T- <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. No, I mean. <laughs> Yes, I, 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 when I, when, I mean, you know, d- during your re- uh, my research, right, they called you the ginger Maradona. And I was like, rubbish, mm. you are Alan Shearer. You are little. <laughs> yes, there's some, there's a few similarities there, isn't there? So, but yeah, what a, what a player he was. And he's, um, he's, he's hungered to score goals. Fantastic player. Uh, and, How did uh, the ginger Maradona thing came about? I'm not sure. I don't know if it was Jason Dacey or if it come up before that. I can't really remember, but it's obviously a very, uh, very nice compliment to be compared to Maradona. You know, so. But yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't think for one minute I'm anything like him. But apart from the fact that I had ginger hair, yeah, no, the, you uh, look like Alicia. No, I mean seriously, the, 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 <laughs> <laughs> because this wasn't just when you're young. Throughout the years, there's like this doppelganger well, effect. Alan Shearer, what a what a fantastic player. Huh? So exactly. I'm happy to look like him, to be like him, but I think he's, <laughs> he's probably got a bit more money 